everyone, I'm Rohana from Making It, and today we're going to be making a lead glass pet portrait. Now, this is going to be an amazing Christmas gift or, you know, just a beautiful decoration to celebrate a favorite furry family member. Now, our first step is to take the picture frame apart, so let's do that. Just open it up. And I've chosen to use a shadow box because it'll give it just that extra bit of depth and maybe leave a bit of space for us to put a light in. So we'll take everything out. And what we're gonna do then is very gently place it on top of our picture. Now, the great thing about a piece of glass is you can decide where your pet should go and I've decided I'm gonna put it down in the bottom corner and that leaves us lots of space to draw lots of extra doodles and maybe a love heart or even an I love you if we want that. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our Poscas. Now these are amazing. They're basically acrylic pens that don't need a paintbrush. So I'm gonna pop that open, grab ourselves a black one and then we're gonna start drawing the outline of our pet. The reason I like starting with the outline is that allows us to create some really nice negative space. So once you've completed the outline of your pet, we can go in and start doing all the little details like their eyes, their smile, my favorite part, and their color. Now the key to making this beautiful is to keep it really, really simple. We want something that's bold, something that pops, and something that looks really nice from a distance. To really make it look like a lead glass portrait, I'm going to add some geometric lines and I'm going to give him a little speech bubble just thinking about how much he loves you. Now again, the key is to keep this really, really simple. We want something bold, something bright and something fantastic. Look at him, he's so cute. And he's so happy to see us. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna wait about 20 minutes until the Posca is completely dry. The reason we do that is because when we mix up the paint, we don't want the black lines to mix in with the color. Don't worry, we can set that aside. So here's a really hot tip. Instead of getting lots of little bowls and having a lot of them to wash out in the end, I just grab a muffin tin and I grab some cling wrap. and I create my own disposable paint tins. Just pop that over. So we're gonna grab our Mod Podge, one of our tablespoons, and we're gonna put two tablespoons of Mod Podge into every one of our containers. So the great thing about food coloring is it usually comes in really bright, bold colors, which is perfect for this project. We want it to pop, we want it to be bright, and we want it to look beautiful against the light. So today I've decided to use blue, green, yellow, and pink. So to our containers full of Mod Podge, we're gonna grab another spoon, and we're gonna add one tablespoon of color now, I'm a busy mom, so I'm all about making things efficient. So I'm using a teaspoon each. But of course, you can just wash out your spoon. So now that we've got our color and our Mod Podge in there, we wanna mix it really, really well. No lumps, guys. It's not gonna look good with lumps. Mix, mix, mix. And really, the consistency we're going for is something quite watery. The Mod Podge is gonna dry clear, so we're not really gonna see a lot of it. What we're really gonna see is that bright, beautiful color coming through. Now that we have our beautiful colors fully mixed, we can start applying it to our beautiful lead glass. So I like to use a paintbrush for each color. It just makes cleanup a lot easier for me, but it's totally up to you. Now, the secret to making this look beautiful is to make sure that we've got an even layer don't be afraid to really push that color to the edges because that's where the Mod Podge dries first. If you really wanted to go for like a textured stained glass effect, you can be a little bit more liberal with the way that you put the paint on. So it doesn't need to be completely smooth, but I like a smooth finish, but so it's entirely up to you. Now I've put a white piece of paper underneath the glass so I can see where I'm putting all of my paint. Uh, it's not totally necessary, but you know, I love seeing those colors pop. I think that's half the fun. 
while you're painting this, you probably figure out why it's a good idea to be bold with your lines and to use really simple shapes. It's a lot harder to, com to control the paint if you've got teeny weeny little details. Now, if you've accidentally gone over the lines a little bit too far, you can always just grab yourself a little bit of tissue to wipe it away. If the mistake is really, really little, you can probably get away with an earbud. Now, I know when you first start crafting, it can be a little bit daunting. You know, you go online and you see all of these beautiful pieces and you think to yourself, how could I possibly do something like that? The truth is, to start crafting, all you need is a bit of time, a bit of patience, and the belief that you can finish something and get it to the end. It's not really about the finished product a lot of the time. I kind of feel like it's about the journey getting there. And as you can see, this is the type of project that you can sit down on a rainy day or on a day that you don't have a lot to do and just enjoy the moment and enjoy the paint and enjoy the idea that at the end of it, you're gonna have something beautiful. My favorite part about crafting is being able to tell a story and to you know, almost remember those stories when I'm making something. I usually think about the people that I care about or the people that inspire the project or the people that I want to give the project to. I think that's the beautiful thing about crafting is once you've made something, you don't need to keep it. You've already experienced it and you can pass it on to the next person. Now, as you're laying down your colors, just remember you don't have to color in every single shape. Your pet has a lot of personality and we really want that to shine through. And a lot of the time, good design is about knowing when to stop. So. Now that we've filled in all of our shapes, we're just gonna leave this to dry for 24 hours. Now that we've left that to dry overnight, we've got this beautiful piece. Look at how bold those colors are. Now, if we really wanted to, we could grab our Posca pen again, go in there and thicken up those lines a little bit more. It's a lot easier to do this part because we've already got our lines down and we can see exactly where the color is. Cool. And there you have it. Now the next thing we're gonna do is frame it up. Now we can stop right here, because if I pick that up, check it out, we've got a lovely window box. Pop that on a windowsill and it'll look absolutely lovely. But if we wanna add just a little bit of extra sparkle to this, all we need to do is grab the back of our frame, which we saved of course, and a white piece of paper. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut our piece of paper down to size and stick it onto the back of our backing board. So I'm actually just gonna fold it because it's heaps easier to do that. I'm gonna place that on top. And then just make sure it fits. There we go. And then here's where the magic happens. We've got our beautiful LED lights and it's battery operated so you don't need to plug it into anything and it's got this lovely bright light. And I'm going to unroll that. Cool. And the great thing about these lights is they've got double-sided tape. So all we need to do is peel the back off. I love using lights in my crafts. They're just such an easy way to make something just a little bit more exciting. Because I'm a mom, I usually need to get my crafting done really, really quickly because you never know when a toddler just might start running in with something sticky. Here's a really hot tip. Try and put the power cord somewhere down in the bottom corner. And that way, when we insert everything, it's nice and tidy. Here we go. Close it up. And we've got our shadow box. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had just as much fun as I did. And don't forget, you can grab everything that you see here at Spotlight. Bye.